Managers at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant have reported a new problem. They say a cooling system for a pool of spent nuclear fuel temporarily stopped working. An alarm indicating an electrical problem went off on Tuesday morning. The cooling system at the number four reactor building stopped because of a partial power failure. Managers say workers digging on a nearby road may have damaged an electrical cable. They switched to an alternative power supply and resumed cooling in the afternoon. Officials at the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, say temperatures in the pool didn't rise significantly. A hydrogen explosion damaged the reactor building in the wake of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Workers have been removing spent fuel rods from the pool and transferring them to a storage facility. The power failure forced them to suspend operations, but they were able to resume work in the afternoon. Japan's nuclear regulators have criticized the plant's operator for failing to prevent the massive leakage. TEPCO officials on Monday told experts of the Nuclear Regulation Authority that the leak occurred because valves that should have been closed were open. This allowed tainted water to enter the tank that overflowed. The officials said workers have not been sufficiently monitoring water levels in the tank. NRA official Toyoshi Fuketa said water gauges, alarms and other devices for preventing leaks were not working. The safety system was supposed to prevent such accidents, but it failed. It's a very serious problem. He requested that the firm take thorough measures to ensure that the devices are fully functional. Another official asked the utility to look into the possibility of human error as workers attaching number plates to the valves may have opened them. After the meeting, Managing Executive Officer Takafumi Anegawa apologized for the accident and said the firm will improve the safety system immediately. He added that the utility must change its corporate culture. You may feel that we didn't do enough, but now we know what the problem is, so we'd like to take control of our safety system as much as possible. Japan's government plans to instruct the operator of the stricken Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant to review its measures to prevent spills and leaks of contaminated water. In the latest incident at the plant, around 100 tons of highly radioactive water spilled from a storage tank last week. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials have been interviewing plant workers to find out why the water spilled. The officials believe someone opened valves that should have been closed. TEPCO needs to review its preventive measures by taking into consideration the tough working environment at the plant. The company also needs to rebuild its organizational structure to prevent similar cases. Suga also said the government will try to ensure that TEPCO implements steps to prevent problems, including those resulting from human error. Engineers are to test the plan to deal with the massive buildup of radioactive wastewater at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They'll try to freeze soil to stop the water flowing. They'll begin the test on March 11th at the earliest. The amount of wastewater has been increasing. 400 tons of groundwater is flowing beneath the facilities from nearby mountains every day. The government plans to spend more than $300 million to build frozen walls around the number one to number four reactors. The test will be conducted at the number four reactor. Engineers will drive steel pipes to a depth of 30 meters in an area measuring 100 square meters. They'll inject liquid coolant at a temperature of minus 40 degrees into these pipes. The refrigerant is expected to freeze the soil in a month or so. Engineers will check whether the frozen wall can stop the flow of groundwater despite the presence of piping or other structures beneath the soil. They'll also study how to replace the pipes. The government and TEPCO aim to start building full-scale walls in the fiscal year that starts in April. But some engineering and geology experts doubt that frozen walls of such an unprecedented size can be properly maintained over the long term. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi has opened the central control room of the facilities number one and two reactors to the media for the first time since the 2011 accident. The room shows signs that workers on duty that day struggled in the dark to get the power back on. 
The central control room, located near next to the reactor buildings, is where workers struggle to contain the crisis three years ago amid rising radiation levels. Radiation in the room just after the accident measured one millisievert per hour. Due to decontamination efforts, the level has since fallen to less than one one hundred fiftieth of that figure. Numbers were scribbled on a wall next to a water gauge. It suggests how staff trying to, con trying to monitor the amount of water inside the reactors couldn't write the figures down on paper in the darkness. A hydrogen explosion that occurred soon after the tsunami struck blew panels off the ceiling. Lighting fixtures remain exposed. The governing parties have just started to discuss a new basic uh, energy plan for the country, but there are still many unanswered questions over Fukushima. In particular, it's still unclear why the workers couldn't properly vent off the pressure inside the containment vessel at reactor number two. No clear picture has yet emerged of where and how the reactor and containment vessel were damaged and why so many radioactive materials manage to escape. TEPCO says a trouble plague treatment system for radioactive water at its Daiichi plant stopped again on Wednesday. The system is supposed to run full speed from April. TEPCO says one of the plant's two working ALPS systems suddenly halted after setting off an alarm. The operator has been test running three systems since December last year. They removed most kinds of radioactive material from the tainted water. The utility plans to finish treating all the water at the site stored in hundreds of tanks by March next year. But the plan has been beset by trouble. And there may be some relief for those caught in the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. Residents of a district in the prefecture near the crippled power plant may soon be able to return home. The government has decided to lift an evacuation order for the district almost three years after the nuclear accident. Senior Vice Industry Minister Kazuyoshi Akaba told residents the government will lift the order for part of Miyakoji district in Tamura City on April 1st. This would be the first lifting of an evacuation order for the contaminated areas. All areas within 20 kilometers of the Fukushima Daiichi plant have been subject to the order. Decontamination efforts have progressed in the district. Residents there have been able to visit and stay at their homes. We made the decision considering the fact many people want us to lift the order so they can start their lives over as soon as possible. Some residents are urging the Environment Ministry to continue decontamination work. They say radiation levels are still high in some places. Ministry officials say they will respond on a case-by-case -case basis. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. 